Hi, welcome to another episode of Element 14 Presents. My name is Mark. Today I'm going to build a Larsen scanner. And if you're wondering what that is, a Larsen scanner, you might know it from the TV series Battlestar Galactica or Knight Rider. It's the red eye in front of the car or the red, uh, the red eye in front of the eyes of the robot. And it moves from left to right and it makes an amazing sound while doing so. I know many people have built this before, but I haven't found one that includes sound, and this one does. You will hear the amazing sound of the Cylon, while the LED is being animated. Uh, you can adjust it to a number of LEDs from 12 to 50, that's totally up to you, so just take a piece of LED strip that you have left and use it. We'll get to that in a minute. So let me walk you through the components, the schematic, and then we'll start building. Well, like I said, it's an easy project, so the schematic is not uh, very uh, complicated. Let me walk you through it. Of course, we have a speaker, and the speaker is connected to an audio board, an I2S, a little piggy bag that you can buy um, at your favorite store. Of course, we have a LED strip, and you can use any LEDs up uh, from 8 or to, let's say 12 to 50, and you can adjust it by um, changing the potentiometer that's connected. We have an ESP32 board, a dev kit one. You could use another ESP32 board that will as well work as long as it has dual core, because we're using both cores. One core is used to uh, play the sound while the other one is used to animate the LED. Okay, so there are four potentiometers. Uh, the one with an X is used for the brightness because it, I want easy access to change it. Then there is one to set the number of LEDs to your setup. And there is one to set the tail size, because when the LED moves from left to right, it will drag a tail and you can adjust the size of the tail. And of course, there is one for speed. That's all there is to it to the schematic. It's not complicated. It's a few wires that we need to solder on, on a breadboard and then uh, you're good to go. Okay, so we need a few sockets that we will cut up to size. A three pin header to connect the LED strip later. Uh, we need a few potentiometers of 10K four pieces and one of them has an X because that's used for the brightness and that's easier to adjust later. Uh, of course we have an I2S audio board, an ESP32 dev kit one, and one single resistor of 330 ohms. Of course we do need some LED strip. And basically you can use uh, up to 50 LEDs, a minimum of 12 and a maximum of 50 LEDs and we can adjust later. So I just got a piece of LED strip for that. And you need a breadboard to solder everything onto. You will also need some wire and a uh, power source. And I'm using a power bank, a USB power bank with a USB cable. And we also need a speaker. Okay, so the speaker I'm using is special. You can use a normal speaker, but I decided to use a speaker exciter. An exciter is basically a, a speaker um, that you attach to a surface. You Simply mount it or stick it on the surface and the whole surface um, acts as a big speaker. It will start to resonate. Um, that way you get a big sound without having uh, to put in much um, power for an amplifier. So we'll give that a try and it might work out perfectly for your cosplay. Now it's high time to fire up the soldering iron and get started. So all components are uh, where I want them to be. I soldier one pin of each component so they won't fall out, but I still need to do the remaining. Remember, if you're not too handy in soldiering, practice makes perfect, and it's not a, a very hard project to soldier. We'll just add a few wires and um, you're good to go. I need to remove the copper that I don't need because all lines are uh, connected and that's not what we want. So we need to interrupt a few lines. So I marked uh, all the traces that I want to interrupt. So I'm just going to use my Dremel. Now 
Now it's time to uh, solder the remaining uh, pins and start wiring up. So that are all the remaining pins. Now we'll add the wires and the easiest to start with is the potentiometers because they all share a power supply and a ground. So now the potentiometers share a common pin. Let's do the same for the other pin that's there. So I skip ahead quite a bit because it's not really that interesting to see me soldiering the whole PCB. So I'll just show you little bits that I did. Okay, so we're ready to hook up to that strip. Like so. So we also need to um, Add two wires to the speaker. Okay, so for programming we'll use the uh, web browser programming and we won't mess around with Arduino. I will include the source code so it's available if you want to, but for now let's stick to web browser programming. Okay, so the programming, it's uh, very, very easy. All you need to do is visit a website that we will provide you a link to and make sure to use Chrome or Edge uh, browser because this does not work with Firefox, unfortunately. But it is what it is. Uh, so take your browser and go to the website. Uh, hook up your ESP32 to your uh, USB port. Then press install, select the COM port that it's connected to and click connect and it will start programming. Now you just need to wait for it to complete and everything's programmed and ready to be used. And that's all there is to it. I will include the source code if you want to look into it, into what I did or you want to change it or add some features. Feel free to do so, but remember in that case you need to recompile it before you can use it. Okay, so we have a few uh, things you can change. Of course, there's the brightness, that's the potentiometer with the axis that you can change uh, to increase or decrease the brightness. Like so. And then we have the number of LEDs. Let's start with that. And then you just turn that uh, potentiometer all the way until the all the green lights are off and uh, until there is no dot staying behind when it moves back. Now of course we still need to adjust the speed. For that let me hook up the sound and we want it to go a bit faster. And finally there is the tail. And that's a number of LEDs that uh, uh, represent the tail when it's moving. And I do want a little tail, like so. So this is all the settings you need to do to make it fit to your LED strip. Now let's find a nice place that I can mount this Larsen scanner. I have a few things in mind. With everything assembled and wired up, it's time for a demo. Now with a gas bill for nowadays, Maybe this is a better solution for my fireplace. So this is all I got for you today. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, remember, uh, there's a project page at the Element 14 community and you can leave comments and ask questions and of course I do my best to answer any questions you might have. Um, 
I do like to know if you're going to build it, what will you use it for? Because I've seen examples of people putting it in the car, even a very big one putting up a house. And um, I've also seen it on toolboxes. And a very nice one I saw was a Halloween pumpkin, where somebody carved a pumpkin as a silent hat. Well, if you add this project, then you have sound as well. So um, that would be nice. And I, would, I really look forward to seeing some examples. So feel free to post them at the Element 14 community. Um, until then, I'll see you next time.